All right, so what's up, fam? Welcome back to the Creative Truth. I'm your host, Raz, filling in for Tyler. Somewhat not filling in, some somewhat. I'm just jumping back in since we started this a few years ago. So thank you guys for having me again as your host. I missed it. Being here now feels like feels like home. Feels good again to be back on camera and talking about creative topics. So today I'm gonna give you some advice on, you know, everything you need to know about podcasting. Everything you need to know. And if you don't know about me, then I have worked for companies worth, you know, upwards of five hundred million dollars or more. I worked for companies worth nothing and who've paid me little to nothing. I worked for, you know, companies with and podcasts and platforms with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and produce their shows. And I've I've helped shows start from the bottom up. I've worked for shows who are continuing to grow and continuing to progress and shows who will never be successful. So I've, I've seen it all, and I've been podcasting since 2013 myself, on and off, doing different projects, different ideas that I have from time to time. That's what I do. It's just what I do. I, I love podcasting. It is the industry for me, for me. So today, I am going to tell you everything you need to know about podcasting. And first off, just a little rant, I hate Spotify. Personally, I'm not going to tell you to hate them, but I'm going to tell you why I hate them. It's because they are trying to like take over the podcast industry and strong arm it and pay the most popular podcasters to be on their to be on their platform and not be on any other platform. They said Joe Rogan, you know, he sold he sold out and he went to Spotify. So many great podcasts are selling out. And I, I would honestly I would do the same thing. Honestly, like if Spotify came to me right now and said, you know, we'll give you. $10 million a year to produce the creative truth on Spotify only, I would do it. No doubt about it. 100% I would do it, right? Because that's a lot of money. But by doing that, they are, in my opinion, they're kind of destroying the industry. Podcasting is free. It should be free. And you should be able to get it on any platform you want, anytime you want. That's the beauty of it. If you produce a podcast once a week, you should it should be free. I'm not saying you shouldn't sell things on the side. You shouldn't sell merch. You should sell merch. You should monetize your podcast, but the information should be free. The main episode, the you know, the full episode that you do should be free. Maybe do some bonus content or maybe do live shows or maybe do merch to monetize your podcast, but don't don't sell out like podcasting is free. It's, that's the spirit of it. That's the beauty of it. It's the stories you learn from people. It's the information you gain. It's the knowledge you're you're accruing. All that stuff is the beauty of podcasting, the free knowledge. And if you what you don't realize that is that if you sell out and only put it on behind a paywall, then you are missing out on affecting the lives of somebody who needs the free information. You're missing out on building relationships for somebody who's not a Spotify subscriber with somebody who's not a Spotify subscriber or whatever, whatever you're doing. If you're just doing it on Patreon and you have a Patreon podcast some people have to pay you to get your main content, like that's cool, but it's just not, it's not helpful. And you're missing out on a huge, on huge growth if you're only helping people and working with people who pay you money for your podcast. Like I, I get that. I'm not saying don't monetize your podcast. I'm saying the main bulk of your production should be free. This is my opinion. This is the freedom, you know, of the freedom of speech. That's the beauty of podcast and nobody can take that away from you. Does that make sense? So don't let don't let these don't let these companies like take the the beauty of podcasting away. That's that's my only rant. So look, I got a few things I want to say Everything you need to know about podcasting is going to be here. So look, video, number one, video is not optional anymore. There's only a few majorly huge podcasts that can go no video. You need to be on YouTube or Vimeo or Patreon or something, just a website, your own website if you have the right hosting. But you need, basically, you get what I'm saying. You need to be on YouTube. It's, it's not optional, Right. People want to see you. People want to see what you're doing. People want to see the guest. People want to see their facial expressions. They want to be able to interact. The downside about podcasting is that if you're on iTunes, there's no there's no comment section, right? There's no comment section. 
But on YouTube, there is. And that's like the most beautiful thing about YouTube is the comment section, because sometimes I laugh harder at jokes in the comments. Sometimes if you watch one channel enough, you'll begin to get the inside jokes that the community of that channel has built. If you, you know, and sometimes you can learn things. You can learn more about a topic by reading the comments. You know, there's a rule on the internet that if you want to know the, the truth about something, then to say the wrong, you know, record a video and say the wrong answer. And then everybody in the comments will tell you what the right answer is. All right. So that's what you get on YouTube. You get the comment section, you get the, the camaraderie of you don't have that on iTunes. I have a couple of podcasts who aren't on YouTube and they don't have the they don't have that community. It's just them talking into a void. We see the downloads coming in and it's, you know, a ton of downloads, but we don't have a way to communicate with our audience. So YouTube is not really not really optional at this point. If you're a producer or if you're starting your own podcast, make sure that is at the top of your list of things to add in. Doesn't have to be a fancy camera like I have. Doesn't have to be some Canon EOS R or, you know, Sony 10,000, whatever. It just has to be, you know, it could be a cell phone. Video doesn't matter as much as audio. Okay. Everybody will tell you that. Video, it can be a little, you know, if as long as it's 1080p, you're going to be fine. Okay, and it's more so about lighting and audio than it is about the quality of the video. Going with that, audio is very important. Very important. Audio quality. You can't have a lot of cracks. You can't be peaking. You can't have a lot of plosives. You can't have a lot of lip smacking or, you know, just just really bad audio. You can't have a lot of background noise. You can't have like a fuzzy echo or, you know, a fuzzy background noise or you know, a, a terrible echo in the room. It has to be decent audio that people can listen to. You know, you can't, if you if you play clips from your show, make sure that the same loudness as you speaking, that's something that that is a pet peeve of mine, listening to a show, like I'll, I'll cut a show off, even if it's funny, if the audio they play or the clips they play or the sound effects they play is at a different loudness, than their voice. So you have to be careful about that. But even even at that, you don't need a crazy sure microphone like I have, even though I'm just holding it right now because I don't have a desk in here yet. You don't need a crazy sure microphone. All you need is a, a $70, $80 mic, a Audio Technica. I can leave it in the, a link to it in the comments, but Audio Technica is perfect. It's like usually around 80 bucks. It sounds great. I've had one for literally about 10 years now. It still works fine. It's a great mic. It sounds great. Nobody will ever know that you pay $80 versus 500 bucks for a microphone. You know, number three, your money should go to building a team. Right. Editing isn't hard. But it's very time consuming. So number three, then, is that you don't need the editing skills because you can learn that. Right. So I'm not going to discuss that in this show. It's very practical advice, but there's a ton of tutorials online already. But what you need is to start building a team around you. Start building a team. If you have money to invest in a five hundred dollar microphone, a thousand dollar computer, a, you know, two or three hundred dollar camera. If you have money for that, don't do it. Invest in the cheapest. Uh, they call it like prosumer quality equipment. My first podcast, I had a $150 camera, a $300 computer, and two $80 mics. And it still looks pretty darn good on YouTube today. And it sounds great. So say you have $2,000 to invest in a, to make it even, say $2,400 to invest in a podcast. So that's $200 a month. You should put that at least $150 a month or a hundred bucks a month towards help, towards building a team, towards automation towards finding a social media assistant to help you with social uh, and audio and video editor, uh, someone to make you thumbnails. Or if you can't, if you don't want to find anybody by using a service online or asking around in your town for help or asking a family member to help you, then you can, you know, find automation, automate your processes somehow. Your money, the bulk of your money should go towards automating your processes and building a team around you. That's where the bulk of your money should go. Nowhere else. Because that's teams win championships. No king rules alone. You have to have a team around you who are going to be successful in podcasts. And that's the one thing 
that podcasters won't tell you, but you'll see it. The your most successful podcasters have a huge team around them. You can't be an NPR quality podcast by yourself. Whether you know if you're watching, whether you're watching Joe Rogan or Mike Tyson or uh, wait, wait, don't tell me. There's always a team of people in the background that you don't hear about, that you don't see, that you don't think about. They're not the they're not the talent, but they are the talent behind the scenes, and that's what you need to start building. And the sooner you can do that, the sooner you'll begin to see growth in your podcast. If you're trying to do everything yourself, like that time has been over a long time ago. Like podcasts are super professional now. People make real money from podcasts. So the the time when you could start out by yourself and have a successful podcast, even though it's sub quality, sub, you know, subpar quality, that time is over. Right. And you can't do it all by yourself. You can't. It's impossible. Even me, like I, I've tried so many times to do it by myself. The only time I ever see traction from a podcast that I've started is when I have a team around me and, and processes to automate everything. So it's, it's a couple processes I have. I've outlined in other videos where I can send a link to a potential guest. They can schedule their time, automate it. I don't have to send emails back and forth. And as soon as they schedule the time, I get an email that they scheduled. It gets added to my calendar and a Zoom meeting ID, you know, meeting link is created immediately and sent to them and sent to me and added to my calendar. So all that is automated. It's not a there's not hours of going back and forth doing it over and over. A big one. Define what success means to you and your team before you even ever start your podcast. You're not going to be the next serial. It just doesn't happen like that. It just doesn't happen unless you have a huge following already and you have some unique idea and you have a team around you. And you're a producer and you're super famous. You, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to have millions and millions of downloads starting out. It's going to take years for that. And it might never happen. It's just the one percent is only one percent because there's ninety nine other percent out there. You know, it's just. Statistics, it's not going to happen, but you can still be very, very successful if you find, you know, your 1000 true fans. Definitely look that up. A thousand true fans. Look up that article. You know, if you can find a thousand people to pay you a thousand dollars a year. Then, you know, you're a millionaire. That's all it takes is a thousand people. You don't have to have millions upon millions of downloads or trying to get a million people to pay you a dollar or whatever. You need a thousand people who love you. So what you should do is you should work on finding those thousand people who really, really love you, love your content, love what you do. The sooner you can find them, the better, because then you can start building processes that will help you to find more people like them. That should be your goal, finding a thousand people who love you and speak and, and speaking to them specifically. Lastly, the hardest part of podcasting is staying consistent. That's it. You can't stay consistent without a team and you can't stay consistent without knowing what success means to you. And so there's a concept called the resistance and it's from a book called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And in that book, he outlines a concept called the resistance. And it's basically the wall that comes up, the barrier, the obstacle that happens every time you start a new creative endeavor. Or start something that's going to be good for you. The resistance pops up and gets in your way. You want to start a podcast. Guess what? A kid gets sick. Guess what? You have to work mandatory overtime at your job. You're sick. You stump your toe on the table walking into your studio. Now you got bad vibes. You don't want to do it. Anything. The resistance is always there. It's a it's a nice day outside. You want to be outside. You don't want to be recording a podcast. Oh, man, it's a rainy day outside. I don't want to record a podcast today. It's a terrible day. I'm just going to go back to sleep. A fire happens. Your house catches on fire. Your car breaks down. Your tire is flat. A kid has a runny nose. Or your dog just pooped on the carpet. You know, like things are going to get in the way every time you try to start a creative, productive, engaging endeavor that's going to move the needle forward for you. That's the resistance. It's going to happen. So you just have to learn how to fight through the resistance and recognize it when it happens and how to overcome it. And I, you know, that's why I'm jumping in with the creative truth again, because I don't want to see this thing we built and that Tyler's carried on stop. 
lose the momentum. So I hope you guys read that book. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that if you're thinking about starting a podcast, you take these, you know, you get these concepts because it's not so much about the technical stuff. It's more so about the mentality behind starting a podcast. It's really a business and you start, you're starting a business and you can help a ton of people, but you have to know what success means to you. If you have, if it's all about the numbers and you need a hundred thousand subscribers by the next year, then you have to put things in place to meet that. You have to ha- have these KPIs that are going to help you meet those specific goals along the way and be willing to invest some money in to your podcast, just like you would into a business. Or if you already own a business and you just want a podcast to be a, an extra resource for your current business to give your customers some added value, that's another way you can be successful. Or maybe it's just a hobby and it's something you love doing, you enjoy doing. Either way, you're going to need to keep these ideas in mind. You're going to need to uh, begin building a team. You're going to know what success means to you. You're going to understand that you can always Google new technical stuff, but more so, it's going to be about building a team around you and investing in a team, investing in uh, investing in, in processes and realizing that the resistance, the resistance is going to get in the way. Maybe you have a co-host. The co-host is going to get tired of doing it. The co-host, I don't want to do this. This seems like too much work. I'm out. Are you still going to do it yourself? Do you still have that fire in you to to do it, even though the co-host gave up on you and left on you, and walked away and moved to another state? Things to think about. So thank you guys for listening. I'm Raz. This has been, you know, everything you need to know about podcasting. And this has been The Creative Truth. Check us out. Check out our website, creative-truth.com. Or anywhere on social media at Creative Truth Pod or Creative Truth Podcast. Go follow us, please. We need the likes. All right. Thank you, guys. Peace.